It's really hard to beat sandy country if you're looking to grow bobwhite quail in West Texas. But there is a liability with sandy country and that's sand burrs or grass burrs and the problems that they can cause for our dogs. We're here today with Rick Snipes. Rick is the president of the Rolling Plains Quail Research Foundation. He's also owner of the Snipes Ranch and he's been hunting birds here in the Sand Hills of Stonewall County for the last 35 years. We're gonna borrow upon his expertise to learn about how to boot a bird dog and how to do it very effectively and economically. Good morning, Rick. Good morning, Dale. How are you? Good, glad to be here. And uh, as we start, I wanna give credit to my great old friend, Jim Perry, who introduced me to Texas quail hunting and taught me a lot about what I know about Texas quail hunting and taught me most of what I know about dog booting. So what I thought we would do is look at a couple of kinds of dog boots and show you how to make a boot on your own and then show you, importantly, how to put the boot on, and just as importantly, is how to take it off. Because usually you're putting them on in the morning, and you've got good light, and it's easy, and you're applying the tape. But in the evening, a lot of times it's dark. And, and you're boot, tired. And you're tired, and the boots have been worn, and the tape has been frayed. So both the way we put the boots on and the kind of tape that we use are geared toward durability of staying on as well as ease of getting them off. And you got, we gotta keep in mind the comfort of the dog as well. Too. And the comfort of the dog. And that's the point we'll look at when we look at a couple of different kinds of dog boots. So without further ado, let's look at the, what is, you would refer to as an industry standard type boot, which is the Lewis dog boot made up in Oklahoma. They're heavy rubber and they come, if you can get a close up here, Russell, they come sort of like this. But that's sort of not going to work on your dog because this back part is going to really irritate the bumper pad of the dog. So what you have to do is trim the boot up. Trim it up, and you notice we've cut a scallop in the back. And that allows it to get far enough up, up the dog's leg uh, to stay on, but the scallop allows it not to bump too much into the pad and give them some ease of comfort. These are hard rubber. Toes are enclosed and they're probably the maximum in protection. But what we found is that we want something other than the maximum in protection because we're looking for the ease and comfort of a dog. Using these quite often, the dog's toes are gonna to become raw from bumping into the end of the boot. With these, we are, these are made out of motorcycle inner tubes, okay? And you notice that we've cut strips down the side We've gone to the back and we've scalloped the back so that it won't get up against the bumper pad and the toes are open. Counterintuitively, you would think it would get a lot of burrs in it. Hardly at all do you get a burr in it. Occasionally you do, but rarely. And just like the Lewis boots, which come in different sizes of a large and a small, the inner tubes also are in different sizes. And you can see here is one that we, which is a two point five inch dog boot, inner tube, and a three inch, 2.75 to three inch dog boot, depending upon the size of your dog's feet. And the size of the boot is totally dependent upon the size of the dog's foot. These are generally big male dogs and these are your females. And that's a, that's a thinner rubber than, than the Lewis boot, right? It's a thinner rubber, it's more flexible, it's open, so you don't get near the wear on your dog's feet as you do with the Lewis boot. You don't get quite the protection, but what we found is you don't need maximum protection. Right. You very rarely need it. These are far more than adequate. And if you've ever been quail hunting all day with a new pair of boots on and you do have one rubbing your toes, you appreciate how sore, how that can uh, incapacitate you and how long you'll remember that. It, it does. And, and the further difference is economics. These boots are approximately $30 for a set of four. These boots, you spend $5 for an inner tube and you get 10 boots. So you're looking at $8 per boot versus 40 cents per boot. Quite a difference. And it's a little disconcerting when you've got four of these that you paid that much for and you get after the, after the first walk and you come back and the dog's lost one or two of them out there. There's no way you're going to find them. That's correct. And these, these motorcycle inner tubes, this is a brand, uh, a Kenda that we found to be a perfectly good uh, combination and the flexibility of the rubber and the size of the tube. Take a second here and show you just how to make one and how simple it is to make one. Take the, I'm not going to go through making 10 tubes out of the one inner tube, 
But simply cut it up near the valve with a pair of scissors using another boot for length. And you'll look at these four and a half or so inches. Cut it. You take this in and you slit it. You notice it's curved very much like a dog's foot. And this will be the front of the boot, and the long curve will be the back. So we take the back, we simply scallop out a piece so that we then have the part that fits against the bumper pad. We do. What, what do you call the bumper pad? Just the the rear? pad on the back okay. of the dog's, okay. you know, uh, uh, the back of the dog's feet. In order to keep the the slit from tearing and running, we generally go one step further and use a uh, hole punch and punch a hole at the bottom of the slit. Okay, flip it over. Do the same on the other side. And that stops the run of the tear down the side of the boot. Just like doing a paint and chip repair on your windshield. There you go. There you go. And that's, that's what we do. Now, okay, we're going to boot a dog, and we've got a, uh, an actress here who's going to help us. Sadie, come here. She's ready to go. And what we do is we use three kinds of tape in applying these boots, okay? Uh, we use them for their, uh, their suitability to the purpose, but we also use them because they're they, they help us in getting the boots off. We start with a simple strip of uh, white cloth athletic tape. If you ever played ball, this is the kind of tape that was uh, always used to tape your ankles. Sadie, give me a foot. You want the left foot or the right foot? We'll try the right foot, maybe a little better. We come right under the dog's pad, apply this tape, and this gives us a real good surface to work for. Tear it, and here you'll notice that we turn in a corner. We do that because when it's dark and we're trying to get the boots off, we have a way to grasp it and get them off. Now, let me have a boot here. Sadie's got a pretty big foot. First of all, what we do is the next level of tape is um, white waterproof tape. And we will tear off a small strip of it. And then we use one inch duct tape strip of it. With this boot, we put the tape up over the dog's foot, making sure it's up next to the bumper pad on the back. We fold down the front end and take the waterproof tape, pop it to, come around, and we have our first securing piece, again, folding under the corner for ease of removal late in the day. Then we fold the end down and come with the duct tape, which gives us our final securing piece. Fold an end of that on, and Sadie's ready to go. We, we booted both of Sadie's front feet, went outside, let her run around a little bit, and now we're going to take them off. It's uh, an important point is that um, most times we only boot the dog's front feet. Quite often you'll find you don't need to boot the back feet of the dog. The front feet is, are, are the feet that take all the pressure that are hitting when they come down. And consequently, that's where you have most of the boot problems. The back feet, unless it's a terrible sandbar year and a particularly bad pasture, we don't boot the back feet. Another thing that's important, give, give. Sadie's got to tote something, even if it's a rock or a dirt dauber nest. She is a retriever after all. Uh, when we take these off, Dale mentioned something is, and something that's important, and that is how tightly do we apply this tape. And you want it to be secure, but be very careful that you don't get it too tight because you can damage the circulation of the dog's foot if you put something on too tight. You know, if you're wrapping a wound, you do it by applying lots of layers of, of cotton and gauze so you can get it secure enough and tight enough without impairing the circulation. The same is true with the boots. And so we want it secure, but we don't want it so tight that it would hurt the circulation. So be very careful with that. Now, taking them off, the beauty is you find the end, flip it around, you're coming off with the tape. You got here, you flip down this, find the piece that's the, the second piece, flip it around, the boot comes off, generally pulls out the last part, and there you are. 
Second boot, uh, same as the first. What you got to do is find the uh, end. You'll get to be a good corner turner once you've taken about a jillion of these things off. And then again, we find the, the fold. We come off with the boot, come off with the tape. Boot slides off. Find the fold on the uh, initial layer. Off we come, and she's ready to go. Then afterwards, you got to clean up. <laughs> and that, my friends, is booting the bird dog. Rick, you know, a lot of people don't hunt in sandy country. They hunt in rocky country, and unfortunately, their dog's pads probably had not been toughened up like they need to be. So what's the application of this booting technique for dogs that are hunting in rough or rocky country? Well, we found, uh, you know, in, in Texas, you generally have two kinds of country. You have sand country, in which case your, your problem you're dealing with is grass burrs. Or you have some of the clay-based soils, and the problems you're dealing with are either prickly pear or rocky country. You know, in Texas, you get your choice. You get grass burrs. Or if you get tight land country, you get uh, prickly pear and rattlesnakes. Right. And we like the quail and the grass burrs. But they, they work equally well in rocky country. And if your dogs are slower, easier going dogs in rocky country, maybe they won't need boots. But if they're like my dogs and they're sort of fast and reckless, they're going to throw their pads pretty quickly if they're not used to it. And it takes more than one, temp, more than one trip to get the dog's feet toughened up. For rocky country so these uh, motorcycle inner tubes work equally well in protection against rocks or protection against grass burrs i'm not sure there's much you can do with prickly pear but and i would suspect that the lewis boots would be better for prickly pear simply because the rubber is thicker and tougher so if you hunt in areas where the stickers where they be grass burrs or goat heads as we call them or rocks and, and gravel that kind of thing Protect your dog's feet by using some of these boots. They're easy to make, and Rick will give you 35 years testimony that they work pretty darn well on a budget. They do, and when we finish the season, we will have had dogs hunt three days a week, four days a week, wearing these boots, and they will not have not a spot on their feet of wear, which is a pretty good testimony to the ease with which the dogs adapt to them and the ease that the boots have on the dog's feet.